sons of the Lord, rise among them. Good morning and welcome. It's so good to have you. We are the Holgate Street Church of Christ. Welcome to our virtual service this morning. We're going to worship God and we're so thankful that you have decided to join us. The call to worship this morning will be from Psalms 96, the first four verses. And it reads, O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Amen. Let's pray. Father, there is no God but you. You are our Lord. You are our Savior. You alone are worthy of all praise. You alone are worthy of our worship. All other gods are idols, but you are our Father. Bless our time together. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. There are some there things, are some things I, may not know. I may not know. Oh, there are there some some places places that I, I, I can't go. Can't go. I cannot go, oh, but I am sure. to read from John the third chapter beginning in the 16th verse and it reads for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world 
but that the world through him might be saved. Let's pray. Father, we're so thankful for the love that you have for us, for the gifts that you have given us. We're so thankful for the gift of Christ. We're so thankful for his sacrifice. Father, for all that he did that we might be saved. Father, we thank you for this bread that reminds us of his body as it hung on the cross for us. Father, we thank you for this fruit of the vine because it reminds us of the blood that was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. Father, as we partake of this emblem, we ask that you would help us to remember Jesus and all that he went through for our sake. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Another part of our worship is giving back to God what, from what he has so richly blessed us with. I would like to read a few verses from 2 Corinthians 9, chapter beginning in the 6th verse. And it reads, But I say this, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he has purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Let's pray. Father, we're so thankful for the many blessings that you've given to us, have entrusted us with. Father, we want to be the kind of givers that you would have us to be. We want to be cheerful givers. Father, we ask that you bless us and that you would help us as we work on our giving. Father, we ask that you bless the offering this morning, that you would bless our use of it. Father, we thank you so much for all that you have done for us, and we want to be the kind of giver that you are. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. There are three ways that you can give this morning. The first way is through our website. You can go to wholegatecfc.com, hit the Donate tab, and enter your information there. The second way is through the Zelle app, where you can go to treasurer at wholegatecfc.com, and you can make your offering there. The third way is the P.O. box, where you can mail your check to Holgate Street Church of Christ, Box 18226, Seattle, Washington, 98118. Thank you, and may God continue to bless you. joy will be gathered with the angel chorus standing by the glassy sea such a thought is hard to fathom in the presence of my king and with countless ones forgiven gathered round the throne to sing glory and It's
For the ways you reign supreme Even death can't hold the vastness Nor approach this awesome thing Cause you are God and to your glory We will worship and abide In your presence there forever We'll be happy to reside Glory and honor Worthy is the Lamb Glory and honor several requests uh, to continue our study uh, in the book of Proverbs. Uh, I, I'd announced a couple of weeks ago, we're getting ready to wrap this up, but some, some of you say, well, no, not yet, not yet, not ready to move on. So uh, I got a few more sermons here from, for you from the book of Proverbs. We're calling it Walking in Wisdom. It's wise sayings for daily living. I love the book of Proverbs. It's one of the most uh, practical books in all the Bible. The Bible is relevant today and it gives us principles for living and so that's why we need to understand what God's word has to say because it's relevant for us today and we've talked about what a proverb is a proverb is a brief wise saying and wisdom wisdom uh, means that you have insight uh, you have understanding you have discernment and once you have wisdom, then it means that you're able to live skillfully. That's really the goal. The goal is, how do I live life the way it's supposed to be lived? And so that's what these Proverbs are about. And so today, uh, we're going to continue, and we, we're approaching these Proverbs uh, from a, a subject perspective. We're not going uh, you know, chapter by chapter, but from a, a subject perspective and giving you some samples of the Proverbs on particular subjects that it does address. Back in 1994, uh, there was a, uh, a sitcom that ran for 10 years. Uh, it was on uh, many lists in terms of its awards. It won many, many Emmys. Uh, it was on the TV Guide's uh, top 50 uh, list of, of TV programs of all times. Now, uh, interestingly enough, I didn't watch this, but it was called Friends. Anybody watch Friends? A few of you, okay. Well, millions of people evidently over a period of 10 years watched it. But this was a, a series of stories of this group of six individuals who were in their 20s and maybe 30s. Uh, they lived in Manhattan, and uh, it, it illustrated their relationship. 
And this again was in the mid 90s. And, and back in the mid 90s, uh, uh, as we find throughout history, especially recent history, uh, that there's an emphasis on relationships. Uh, I don't know those of you who, uh, uh, what you did over the last couple of years during the pandemic and everybody was locked in and stayed home, uh, you know, what, what did you do? Did you, did you grow your friendship? And here I'm not talking about Facebook friends. Okay, we, we use that term, friends, right? But I'm talking about true friends. And so what we're going to do this morning is, is, is explore a couple of these proverbs that has to do with, with friends and friendships. Now, when we look at um, friends, and I think about my own life, um, the earliest friend that I remember, uh, and, and I grew up in Tennessee, at least the first, when I was eight years old, we moved to Seattle when I was eight. And I remember uh, in Tennessee, ele early elementary school, uh, my best friend was Ronnie Robinson. Ronnie Robinson. Ronnie and I would hang out, and, and of course back then we'd play, and uh, we'd play cars, you know, and we'd make, we'd make uh, uh, roads in the dirt, in the gravel, and run our trucks and cars through those roads. See, we didn't have video games back then, guys. No video games back then. We, we played outdoors. You ever hear that? <laughs> Uh, but Ronnie and I were great friends, and we spent, we spent every single day together. And we were friends. We were friends. Um, before Jack and I got married, we met in 1974, uh, we became friends first. Okay? We married four years later, but we, we became friends first. And those of you who are married, uh, you need to have a friendship uh, between the two of you. And those of you who are uh, uh, interested in being married, uh, that guy or that woman needs to be your friend. So friendship is, is key. And, and a lot of us don't have a lot of friends. But uh, I want to talk about that just for a minute. I want to ask you the question then. Um, what, what is a friend? What is that? And I want to give you actually, I want to invite you into this in terms of a little audience participation here. And... Uh, uh, if you're sitting next to someone, I want you to just take 30 seconds. Uh, if you're not, just think about it. But, but what are some qualities of friendship? What is a friend? Okay, just take, just take 30 seconds and then we'll get a couple of responses. Okay, so if you're sitting next to someone, what is a friend? What is that? What, what qualities characterize friendship? Just take 30 seconds and share that. If you're sitting by yourself, just think about it. What is a friend? What is that? You know, do you have a friend? You have friends? You have friends? Okay. So what is a friend? What is that? What is that? I right, give you about another 10 seconds here. About another 10 seconds, then I'll hear from you. About another 10 seconds. Okay, let's hear let's hear from a, a couple of you. Uh, what is a friend? What do you think? Raise your hand. Yes. Find someone that's true that's true to you when you need the most. Okay, someone that's true to you when you need the most. Alright, great. Yes. Uh, somebody who is selfless. Someone who's selfless, okay? So they care about you and not themselves, okay? Yes? Somebody that has your back, okay? Great. All right, we're hearing from all the young people this morning. Who, who else? Someone who will tell you the truth. Someone who will tell you the truth, okay? What else? What's a friend? Now I saw you moving. <laughs> yes? Someone that could let you down. Okay, someone potentially could let you down. It means you trust them, you take risk with them. Okay, all right. Uh, anybody from the back section? One more, let's have one more. What's a friend? One more. Understanding. Okay, someone who understands you, someone who knows you and understands you. Well, it's interesting the Bible talks about friendship. And uh, what's interesting uh, is in the book of James, when uh, James is talking about faith, uh, he, he makes a statement in chapter 2, uh, verse 23. Here's what he says. He says, And the scripture was fulfilled, saying, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Amen. Abraham was called God's friend. That's James 2 in verse 23. So, so isn't that interesting? That, that, that we can actually be referred to as God's friend. 
Here again, uh, Jesus in his uh, relationship with his disciples. Here's what he says about uh, friends. Uh, this is recorded in John 15, uh, starting at verse number 12. He says, My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than he lay down his life for his friends. Amen. Amen. Now Jesus makes this expression of laying down his life. You know, you know that I was talking about. I was talking about his, his uh, upcoming uh, crucifixion. That Jesus' life was not taken from him. He voluntarily laid it down. He laid it down as an expression of love, which means you want the highest good, you want the best for that other person. And he says, greater love has no one than this, than he laid down his life for his friends. And he continues, he says to his disciples, he says, you are my friends. You are my friends. But there's a condition to that friendship. He says, you are my friends if you do what I command. If you do what I command. You just can't be called the friend of Jesus. Being a friend of Jesus is something that you demonstrate. True friendship doesn't just say, hey, she's my friend. No, true friendship is demonstrated by the way that you live. Jesus said here, again, in, in John 15, verse 15, he says, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. So this idea of, of, of friendship having to do with both our relationship with God and our relationship with one another. Well, let's look at just a few Proverbs and, and uh, won't keep you long this morning. But just a few insights that the Proverbs has to say about friends and about friendship. The first is Proverbs 12 and verse 26. It says, The righteous choose their friends carefully, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. The righteous choose their friends carefully, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. There's one thing interesting about when you compare family and friends. You compare family and friends. When it comes to families, children don't choose their parents. Huh? Huh? Anybody, anybody choose their parents? It, now, it can go the other way. If you're adopting a child, then you can choose that child, right? Uh, but, but families, being born into a family, you, you, you didn't have a choice with that. But here the Bible says that the righteous, those, those who are connected to God, they choose their friends. So, so if you don't have any friends, it means that you haven't chosen anybody to be your friend. It's an option. Uh, and, and there are many individuals from which you can choose. So friendship comes by choice. It's not something that we're forced into. Now notice here again the terms. It says the righteous choose their friends how? They do it carefully. That means you don't, you don't pick anybody to be your friend. Uh, another proverb speaks and, and it warns about uh, making friends with, with, uh, with an angry man, a high-tempered person. W why is that? Well, that's because your friends are going to potentially influence who you are and what you do. Those of you that are parents, isn't it true that when your children are growing up, you want to know who their friends are? Huh? Why is that? Because you just don't want any old boy or girl hanging out with your son or daughter. Because you don't know who they are. You don't know uh, their family life. You don't know, you know what they believe or what's going to happen. And so you are careful about who your children's friends are. And so as young people, as you're growing up, you, you need to be careful 
about who your friends are. And, and here's a good way to tell, okay, a good friend. A good friend will lead you closer to God. One who is not a good friend will lead you away from God. Amen. Now, that's the, the, the same is true with adults. If you as an adult, you're developing friendships with people, you need to know that a good friend, you can tell a good friend because that friend is going to lead you closer to God. You're going to have a greater love for God, a greater commitment to God. A friend that you don't need is someone who, oh, you, don't, you don't need to be going to that church. They're just trying to take your money. That's a waste of time. Besides, you know, there's seven days in a week and we got to have a day for ourselves. No, no that's, that's not a good friend right there. You know, a good friend does say, yeah, I'll come to church with you. Huh? I'll come with you. Yeah, I'll, I'll pray with you. I'll read the Bible with you. And, and tell me more about that Jesus person. Okay? That's a good friend. And so the scripture tells us that, that we need to choose our friends and to choose them carefully. All right, here's the next one. Proverbs 17, 17. This is the one that was read uh, just a moment ago. Proverbs 17, 17 says that a friend loves at all times. And a brother is born for a time of adversity. A friend loves at all times. You know, you know what that means? That means uh, that, that person is not sometimey. You know how a light switch, you turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. A true friend is always on. The love of that friend is constant. It doesn't matter what the circumstances. It doesn't matter when there is adversity, when there is trouble, when there is difficulty. Because what happens in terms of a friend, number one, a friend knows you. And I think that came up in our, in our definitions of friendship. And if you know someone, you're going to be aware of what's going on in their lives. See, if you say that you have a friend, you need to be able to, to recite and know the adversities that they have faced and that they're facing now. And vice versa. If you believe a person is, is your friend, they need to be aware of the challenges that you are going through. Because that's life. And that's what friends do. So a friend loves constantly at all times. And what that means, what is, again, what does love mean? It means that, that they're always seeking your best good. Amen. Everything they do, everything they say is always for your good. All right, let's look at the next one. Proverbs 18 and 24. Proverbs 18, 24. And here's a contrast. Here the Bible says, who, uh, the one who has unreliable friends. The one who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Well, let's talk about the two parts. Let me talk about the second part of that first. Now, brothers naturally are, are supposed to be close. Am I right? Brothers are supposed to be close. They're supposed to know each other. They're supposed to, to feel happy around each other. They're supposed to, somebody said, have each other's back. That's what a brother does. But here, this is interesting, isn't it? It says that there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Now, in contrast to that, that kind of friend is contrasted with the unreliable friend. Well, what's that? Well, that's the person you can't trust. You can't trust that person. I remember years ago, and uh, 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 you remember the movie Raisin in the Sun? Years ago, Sidney Poitier, and... Uh, and they did a remake of it, okay, recently. And uh, there was some insurance money that the father left for the family. And, and Sidney Poitier, you know, he's now the new head of the family. And, and he's trying to figure out what to do with that money. And he decides to get into this deal. And he had some friends, so-called, that had a plan. And his part of the deal, he was going to give his friend, so-called, $10,000. 
And so he gave that money to, to his friend who gave it to Willie. And Willie's supposed to meet to finish up the deal. And guess what? Willie didn't show. That money was gone. And, and, and if you've seen the movie, if you haven't seen the movie, you need to see the movie, guys. Uh, go do, do the original one, okay? The remake is okay, but the original one is, is great. But Sidney Poitier, when he hears that Willie took the money, he's gone. He says, Willie! 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 <laughs> Who was Willie? He was the unreliable friend. He said he was going to do one thing, and he turned around and did something else. And besides that, what he did hurt his so-called friends. Unreliable friends. So what does that tell us on the, on the, on the, on the flip side? And again, the results of that, the scripture says that if you have unreliable friends, what's the results of that? It says you will come to ruin. You will come to ruin. What's the flip side? The flip side is to have friends and you build trust. Amen. You build trust. And that's true with all relationships, especially in marriage. See, that's why in, in, in a marriage, for example, uh, uh, when there is a breaking of the vows, when, when a, a, a spouse is unfaithful, it's still possible to rebuild that marriage. But the challenge is, there's been a, a breaking of the trust. Trust has been broken. But it can be rebuilt. I see some, a stranger coming through the door. Can somebody go check that out for me, please? Somebody coming out to the door. Thank you. Trust has been broken. And, and trust can be rebuilt. Because that's what friendship is all. Friendship involves trust. All right, let's move to the next one. Well, we got a lot of guys responding. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's real good. All right, let's look at the next one. Proverbs 27 and verse 6. It says, wounds from a friend can be trusted. Wounds from a friend can be trusted. But an enemy multiplies kisses. All right, let's break that down a little bit. This expression, wounds from a friend. Now, if you have a close friend, you know and you, you have experience in the time of your friendship, things that your friend has said and you have felt hurt. And in particular, these things that have been said to you are things that they felt would improve your life. See, because friends trust each other, they can be honest with each other when it comes to, to giving each other feedback. Huh? Are you hearing me? Okay. So, so, so we want our friends... To give us feedback about our lives. We can't do it on our own. And so sometimes, uh, and, and again, you know, there's a dynamic to that. Okay? You, you, when you're going to give people that kind of feedback, you got to get permission. Okay? It's like, it's like you got to say, Brother Paul, can, can, I, can, I, can I share something with you? Okay? Brother Paul says, sure. Okay? Or he might say that to me, Brother, Brother, Brother Jimmy, can I share something with you? I said, yeah. And, and so you, you kind of get a, a feeling uh, uh, that it's, it's going to be a wound, potentially. And that's okay. Because the intention, again, is good. The intention there is to share that with me so that I can become a better person. I remember um, someone uh, who uh, gave a speech years ago. And uh, uh, I'm trying to describe this person so I won't give this person away. But I won't. It's a person. And so after the speech, uh, you know, I said to this person, uh, yeah, you mind if I share a little feedback about your speech? And she said, yeah. And so I did. And, and that was probably 15 years ago. 
And today, she probably still doesn't remember that. You know, I remember how you told me about my speaking. Okay? That didn't go very well. But that's what happens in friendships. In friendships, you need to have that openness and that trust. And again, you don't share. When you're sharing, when you're in the sharing end, you're not sharing to put that person down. You're not sharing this information in order to make yourself feel better. But you're doing it because you love that person. And you want that person to be a better person. And so wounds from a friend, a true friend, can be trusted. But the, the second part here, an enemy multiplies kisses. Uh, if you're reading through Proverbs, there are several, several Proverbs that talk about flattery. Huh? Flattery uh, can be empty. You're saying certain words and you're complimenting a person, but it's not really from the heart. See, an enemy will multiply kisses and say great things about you. And, and, and you don't want them saying anything that's going to wound you. Because that's a war right there. Okay? You, you see the contrast here? All right. Okay. Uh, let's see. I've got, uh, well, here's one more. Proverbs 27, verse 9. Proverbs 27 and verse 9. Perfume and incense bring joy to the heart. And the pleasantness of a friend springs from their heartfelt advice. Now, this, this seems to, to uh, be connected with, but also contrasted with the previous verse. Because here we see uh, described the pleasantness of a friend. Pleasantness is contrasted with being wounded in the previous verse. And what, what, what's being contrasted here is you experience pleasantness from what? Their heart felt advice. So in this instance, you experience pleasantness because of the advice of your friend, whereas in the other, you were wounded when they shared that with you. You see that contrast? So that's what friends do. Yeah, friends, friends give each other heartfelt advice. They do that. Uh, friends cause each other to experience pleasantness. As a matter of fact, this, this expression, uh, affection, affection. Uh, you know, what is affect? Affect are the emotions. And affection means that you feel good when you're in the presence of another person. Now, what does that have to do with friendship? Friendship means that when your friend shows up, when your friend calls, when your friend sends you a text, you've got a good feeling. Huh? And, and again, those of you that, that are married or plan to get married, uh, there's, a, there's a song that came out some years ago. Uh, the song was called, The Thrill is Gone. <laughs> the Thrill is Gone. You know what that means? That means the affect is gone. The feelings are gone. You no longer feel the same way about that person. But you know what? The good news is that can be rekindled. The pleasantness of a friend. All right. Let's see. I have uh, two more and the, the, the sermon is yours. Two more. Proverbs 16, 28. Proverbs 16, 28. A perverse person stirs up conflict. A perverse person stirs up conflict. And gossip separates close friends. What is this saying? This is saying if you have a friendship with someone, that potentially there can be outside influences that can impact that relationship. Did you think about that? If you have the friendships that you have, potentially... Outside influences can impact that relationship. And so, this is a warning. You need to be aware of that. And not allow other people to come between you and your friends. Alright, one last one. Proverbs 17, verse 9. 
Whoever would foster love covers over an offense. But whoever repeats the matter separates close friends. Now here again, we have uh, this, this idea of friends being separated by someone. But I want to, I want to talk about this idea that uh, of fostering love. The Bible tells us uh, in, in several places that love covers a multitude of sins. Now what does that mean? That doesn't mean that you ignore sin. It doesn't mean that, that when sin needs to be dealt with, either individually or uh, within the context of the church. We, we're, we're, not just, we're not just tolerating sin. What this means is this. Uh, now, I have a lot of faults, right? It's okay to say yes. <laughs> but you know what? You don't know about a bunch of them. You know why? Because Jackie hadn't told you. She knows. She knows a bunch of my faults. But she doesn't go around talking about them all. Why is that? Because she loves me. And her love covers that. Huh? You hear what I'm saying? That's what friends do. Friends, friends don't go around telling all the negative about the friend. Hmm? Okay? What do friends do? Friends love. Love covers, looks over. It's able, it's able to put up with an offense. I remember years ago, uh, we attended a premarital workshop, and I, I, you know, this is 44, over 44 years ago, and I still remember this. Uh, it was given by uh, two men, uh, Burkeen and Faulkner, and they were giving an illustration, a true, true example of a husband and wife, and the husband would always leave his socks on the floor. Okay? Dirty socks. And she got so... And so uh, they were in counseling. And so you know, what the, you know what the counselor told her? He said, nail them to the floor. You see a sock down? Just, just nail it to the floor. Now, I don't know how it turned out, but... What's the point? The, the, the point is you're, you're covering. You're, you're, you're not consistently bringing up and surfacing all the bad stuff about your friend. All right, well, what have we said today? The Bible speaks, and Proverbs in particular, speaks about friends. And a person who lives skillfully, a person who is wise and has discernment, is able to choose their friends carefully and then relate to those friends in a way that benefits, it's mutually beneficial. And then ultimately, we need to remember that, that we're friends with God. And what did Jesus say? You're, you're my friends if you do what I command. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word this morning. And we thank you that we, we can uh, be called your friends. We do thank you for the friends that we have uh, on this earth that you've given us the opportunity to experience this type of love and affection and mutual encouragement. And those of us perhaps who, who maybe need more friends, we pray that you will open those opportunities, that we might not live this life alone, but we may enjoy, enjoy the fellowship of one another that you have, have made us for. You've made us to love and belong, and we thank you for that. We pray through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. If you're not a Christian this morning, uh, and you, you may need to take that next step in terms of your spiritual life and your spiritual journey. Uh, maybe it's having a Bible study. Uh, maybe it's uh, being baptized. Uh, maybe it's uh, getting more involved in a discipling relationship. Or maybe perhaps uh, you have a need uh, still that maybe you've thought of uh, while we've been assembled here this morning. Um, Paul and I will be here uh, following our dismissal. And uh, we welcome you to, uh, to stay and, and we can talk about your need. Because Jesus, of course, died for our sins according to the scriptures. He rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And our response to him is one that puts us into Christ, into his body. And so we'll be here to speak with you about that if you have need. We want to be praying, especially for our families who 
um, to gather today. We thank you for your presence. We worship you and praise you, and you indeed are worthy. And we thank you for your presence with us, even as we leave this place today until the next appointed time, we pray. Through the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thanks for being Thank you so much for joining us on our recorded worship today. I hope it was a blessing for you. And I want to mention that if you do have an interest in knowing more about the Lord or progressing in terms of your spiritual walk, we're here to assist you with that. If you have a desire for a Bible study, uh, if you're interested in be being baptized, uh, growing in your spiritual life, please contact us at contact us at holgatecoc.com. Again, that's contact us at holgatecoc.com. And if you do live in the Seattle area, we are having in-person live worship every Lord's Day at 10 o'clock. Uh, we'd love for you to join us there. In the meantime, have a great day and a great week.